King Makado Shurabusiku Ramaburana was born in 1839, the youngest son of King Ramaburana of the Venda people in what is now the Limpopo province of South Africa. Makado's father was a powerful and respected ruler and he ensured that Makado received a traditional education, immersing him in Venda history, culture and warfare. Makado's mother, Rimani, was the youngest wife of King Ramaburana and held a special place in the hearts of the Venda nation. Her charm, intellect and happy disposition endeared her to many and she was regarded as the beloved mother of the Venda people. Makado's popularity and his mother's widespread admiration played a significant role in his selection as the king of Deva Venda people after his father's death in 1864. It is worth noting that King Ramaburana was the last Mavenda king to be buried in a cave. Following King Ramaburana's passing, Dabana, his eldest son, along with his nine younger brothers, approached Ramaburana's sister, Makadzinya Kuhu, seeking her support to have Dabana installed as king. However, Makado was excluded from this process due to a perceived loss of his rights through circumcision. Makadzinya Kuhu opposed their reasoning, but Dabana nonetheless claimed the throne, rendering his accession null and void in the eyes of many. Dabana faced opposition from ordinary vendor people who viewed him as a harsh and dictatorial ruler. In contrast, the majority of the Venda people rallied behind Makado, appreciating his mother, Rimani, for her kindness, generosity, and caring attitude. Makati Nyahuhu and her brother Kotimunene Mahzi came together and agreed to install Makado as the new king. This division led to a battle between Makado's forces and those supporting Dabana with Makado emerging victorious in 1864 and being widely acclaimed as the new king of the Venda people. The Venda kingdom comprised of other ethnic groups whose language was not Chivenda. These clans included North Sutu clans such as the Tlokwa, the Kone, and Quena. But the Kone and Quena took advantage of the succession conflicts and started acting like independent chiefdoms. Makado did not allow this to continue. He became concerned and getting back his authority over such rulers became his immediate priority. He then mobilized his armies against the chiefs in the southwestern parts of the kingdom. Many were killed in the process of Makado's assertion of power. Under Makado's rule, he sought to unite the Venda and secured their loyalty. He embarked on a campaign to visit various regions, including Chakuma, Ramondo, Mbiri, and Hachibase, where he received tributes from chiefs. Makado fiercely resisted the Boer attempts to displace him and defended his people with great determination, earning him the nickname Lion of the North for his ferocity in protecting his territory. In 1865, relations between the Boer settlers and the Venda deteriorated, and Makado and Kotsimunene Mazi were at the center of the conflict. As from 1865, sporadic attacks were launched on settler farms. One of the main issues was the Boers' desire to expand their territory into Venda land, as the Boers had already established a settlement at Skumasdal and they wanted to claim more land in the area. Makado and Madzi were opposed to this, as they wanted to protect their people's land and resources. Another issue was the Boers' demand for tribute from the Venda. The Boers claimed that the Venda owed them taxes, but Makado and Madzi refused to pay. They maintained that their people were independent and did not owe tribute to the Boer settlers. Additionally, 
The Boers forced vendor women and children to work their fields, demanded taxes, and attempted to confine the vendor to a reserve of their choosing. The conflict escalated in June 1865, when the Boers arrested Mercado's envoys. This led to a series of raids and counter-raids, and eventually to open warfare. The war lasted for over a year and ended with the destruction of Skuman's Dal by the Bavenda. The government of the Transvaal and the Orange Free State tried to negotiate. Eventually, with all peaceful efforts unsuccessful, Commandant General Paul Kruger was sent in with an army of some 500 burghers in May 1867. He was supported by the Portuguese paramount chief of the Shangan people, João Albacini, and his followers. They launched an attack on Luatami, Bulorwa, and Madzi. The forces were, however, unable to realize their objectives and were forced to retreat to Skumansdal. On 15 July 1867, the Boers evacuated Skumansdal. After the evacuation of Skumansdal, the village was plundered by Makado's people. They wanted to ensure that the Boers would not return. He was able to force the Boers out of a region in which they had settled over a period of 19 years. They left behind valuable possessions. To the vendor, it was a great victory. However, the Portuguese paramount chief of the Shangan people, João Albacini, and his followers stayed behind, and tensions would continue to escalate with Mercado. Albacini and his company of pioneers stuck it out in the fort on his farm and were able to assist the trekkers when they returned to take up tracts of land the following year. Mercado's popularity and fame also spread to neighboring African communities. Mercado's attitude towards the Republic based in Pretoria had a very strong influence on the neighboring communities who also started rebelling against the Republic. This next part about the Dutch Reformed Church will be important in providing context around the circumstances of King Makado's passing, which will happen three decades later. By the time the Boers were driven off Skuman's Dal by Makado and his forces, the Dutch Reformed Church had already established the Kransport Missionary Station, which was in the land of Mahzi in 1863 by Reverend Alexander McKidd which was eventually headed by Stephanus Hofmeyer in 1865. The Dutch Reformed Church had a long history of perpetrating white supremacy through violence, enslavement, and racism against Africans. Mercado wanted all the Boers to leave Venda as he believed he was the only leader for his people. And the introduction of new religious influences challenged his authority and traditional beliefs. While Mazi wanted the missionary Stephanus Hofmeyer to remain as he seemed more accepting of African people and was intent on introducing Christianity to many. As Mercado became firmly established in his position, he began to act independently and sometimes against the wishes of Mazi who had played a significant role in Mercado's rise to power. This shift in Mercado's behavior led to tensions between the two. The rift between the two developed after the Boers had abandoned Skuman's Dal in 1867. This rift and others over the course of the next three decades would contribute to how Mercado was perceived in the royal household. In July 1868, President of the Orange Free State Martinus Pretorius visited Sutpansberg and met with groups that were resentful of Mercado's rule. This included Dabana, who still felt that he was cheated out of his birthright. Pretorius announced the removal of Joao Albacini as diplomatic agent, replacing him with Stephanus Skuman, which was welcomed by those in attendance who promised to be obedient to the new diplomatic agent. After the meeting, an alliance was formed to challenge Mercado's authority. Dabana, with ambitions to regain control of Venda, and the Boers, who felt betrayed by Mercado for not returning their guns and forcing them to leave Skumansdal, were part of this alliance. 
This meeting set the stage for the return of farmers who had fled after Mercado's earlier attack. The meeting was followed by the arrival of German missionaries in Venda. Buster established a number of mission stations at Mawungani in 1872. Schwellness established one at Shakuma in 1874 and Kuhn another at Mabola in 1877. These missionaries from the Berlin Missionary Society were followed by others from the Swiss Mission who established their mission stations at Luwalani in 1875 and Vari in 1883. The arrival of the church in Venda marked the beginning of a transformation in the traditional beliefs held by the Venda people. This transformation was made possible, in part, by the peaceful engagement between Dabhana and Pretorius, which allowed missionaries to operate in the Ramabulana land. It's important to note that Mikado did not welcome the arrival of missionary as he considered himself the sole leader of his people. Mikado had varying relationships with white individuals. He had a friendly association with farmer and merchant Terence Fitzgerald, allowing him to hunt and trade in his land. Fitzgerald had expressed that he was not in favor of Mikado's ongoing resistance against the Boers, as he was well aware of their access to guns, as well as their determination and the violent lengths to which they would go to forcefully take Venda land. Mikado was also friendly with John Cooksley, who had a licensed bar where Mikado frequented. He had contentious relationship with the Portuguese paramount chief of the Shangan people, Joao Albacini, who died on 10 July 1888. The death of Albacini brought many changes in the South Ponsberg, and it gave Mercado more power. Different groups had varied reactions to Joao Albacini's death. The Shangan people reacted with shock and anger at the news of the death of their chief. Mercado and his followers were pleased by the news as they had seen Albacini as a hindrance. Albacini's role in collecting taxes for the government from Venda and other African groups had created animosity. Exacerbated by his support for Dabana, who was in conflict with Mikado and had sought refuge with Albacini. Albacini's death increased Mikado's power and disrupted tax collection for the Republic because people couldn't pay in money. Taxes were paid in labor, affecting those tribes who had already submitted to the Republic. Mikado, during this time, received gifts of gold, guns, and liquor from young Venda men who worked in Kimberley and brought these back to him. This made Mikado a wealthy king and increased his sense of strength and security. Mikado demonstrated a degree of modernization in his leadership. He was often seen in European clothes and had an entourage with European attire and brand new guns. Despite this modernization, he remained fiercely protective of his independence and sought opportunities to expand his territory. In 1888, not very far from Mikado, across the Limpopo River, Cecil John Rhodes founded the British South African Company. Rhodes Company was given the responsibility of expanding the British Empire by colonizing territories north of the Limpopo River. It was tasked with maintaining law and order in these regions. By 1890, the British South African Company had successfully occupied Mashona land, leading to the expansion of European settlement in the area. The British flag was raised, and the region was renamed Rhodesia after Cecil John Rhodes, reflecting his central role in the company and its activities. The British invasion of Kalanga lands for the formation of Rhodesia threatened Mikado. Venda was separated from the Shona people by the Limpopo River. Mikado heard that Cecil John Rhodes had sent men to offer him protection against the Republic. Pleased by this, Mikado invited Captain Alfred Taylor and other soldiers from Rhodesia to discuss a pact between the Venda and the British. 
Not all vendor people were pleased with Mikado's alliance with the British. Elders and counselors criticized him for associating with white foreigners, fearing a potential annexation of their land. Mikado's alliance with the British eventually reached Pretoria, leading to concerns about his defiance, and Pretoria perceived Mikado as a threat to its authority. In 1893, General Piet Joubert, representing Pretoria, sent a warning letter to Mikado through Reverend Westman of the Berlin Mission. The letter was read to Mikado in two languages, emphasizing its importance. Mikado's defiant attitude toward Pretoria influenced neighboring communities to rebel against the Republic, leading to growing tensions in the region. Leading up to 1895, the year of King Mikado's death, there had been numerous persistent requests by the Republic for a census and land demarcation. Mikado's refusal to accept the government's resolution on the census and location demarcation further exacerbated an already tense situation. The government was unwilling to back down, and Mikado was equally unyielding. Consequently, the divide in understanding between the two sides continued to widen, and the Boers were determined to see him defeated. The story surrounding the death of King Mikado remains unclear as there are many versions. One prevailing story is that Mikado had a white friend named John Cooksley, who I have previously mentioned, and he ran a bar at Lovedale Park. Wine and brandy were rare commodities at the time, especially for Africans who could usually only obtain them through back channels. However, Mikado could freely access his friend, Cooksley's bar, which he visited despite it being against custom for the king to seek liquor or any other commodity. Liquor was supposed to be brought to the royal residence. So by September 1895, the wheels had already been in motion by senior members of the royal household to remove Mikado as king. Disgruntled individuals sought like-minded allies to air their grievances, which led to the joint conspiracy. The goal was to remove Mikado without resorting to armed conflict, as they recognized they could no longer advise or negotiate with him. It is said that they wanted to remove him to allow the pursuit of a more conciliatory attitude towards the Republic. It is said that Mikado's senior advisor, Rasebechele Nwapunga, who was Mikado's senior wife, John Cooksley and others plotted to kill Mikado. They obtained poison from the Boers and poisoned a bottle of brandy meant for Mikado. He drank it without suspecting anything and fell ill, eventually dying in mid-September 1895. It is important to remember that there are varying accounts of this event. However, what remains consistent is that it is believed that King Mikado died a lonely man with no one to trust. Mikado's death marked a huge change in the political landscape. While he was alive, Ha Ramabulana had become a place of business activity and connections to the South and East while still retaining its unique character. Unlike in other areas, the colonial authorities and their methods of control hadn't deeply affected the kingdom or the main vendor regions. Makado had managed to deal with the demands and threats from the colonial powers, showing that these could be negotiated or manipulated to protect vendor control of their lands. However, after Makado passed away, there was a chance for the colonial authorities to weaken the political order in a way they couldn't before. In the end, Pretoria's goals to divide and categorize land were achieved by the colonial authorities who exploited internal divisions and weakened the Venda kingdom. Makado's death was a major blow for the Venda people. He was a strong and independent leader. He refused to bow to the demands of the Boers or the British, and he fought to preserve the independence of his kingdom. Makado's legacy is one of courage, determination, and resistance. He was a true hero of the Venda people, 
and his story is an inspiration to all who fight for freedom and justice. Makado and Sikukune of the Marota people, commonly known as the Bapedi, are said to have had such a good relationship that they referred to each other as brothers. They also had similar struggles with the Boers and the encroachment of their lands. Please check out my video on King Sikuhune.